book twenty two of the iliad by homer translated by alexander pope this librivox recording is in the public domain book twenty two argument the death of hector the trojans being safe within the walls hector only stays to oppose achilles priam is struck at his approach and tries to persuade his son to re-enter the town hecuba joins her entreaties but in vain hector consults within himself what measures to take but at the advance of achilles his resolution fails him and he flies achilles pursues him thrice round the walls of troy the gods debate concerning the fate of hector at length minerva descends to the aid of achilles she deludes hector in the shape of deiphobus he stands the combat and is slain achilles drags the dead body at his chariot in the sight of priam and hecuba their lamentations tears and despair their cries reach the ears of andromache who ignorant of this was retired into the inner part of the palace she mounts up to the walls and beholds her dead husband she swoons at the spectacle her excess of grief and lamentation the thirtieth day still continues the scene lies under the walls and on the battlements of troy thus to their bulwarks smit with panic fear the herded aliens rush like driven deer there safe they wipe the briny drops away and drown in bowls the labours of the day close to the walls advancing o'er the fields beneath one roof of well-compacted shields march bending on the greeks embodied powers far stretching in the shade of trojan towers great hector singly stayed chained down by fate there fixed he stood before the scaean gate still his bold arms determined to employ the guardian still of long defended troy apollo now to tired achilles turns the power confessed in all his glory burns and what he cries has peleus son in view with mortal speed a godhead to pursue for not to thee to know the gods is given unskilled to trace the latent marks of heaven what boots thee now that troy forsook the plain vain thy past labour and thy present vain safe in their walls are now her troops bestowed while here thy frantic rage attacks a god the chief incensed too partial god of day to check my conquests in the middle way how few in aelian else had refuge found what gasping numbers now had bit the ground thou robst me of a glory justly mine powerful of godhead and of fraud divine mean fame alas for one of heavenly strain to cheat a mortal who repines in vain then to the city terrible and strong with high and haughty steps he towered along so the proud courser victor of the prize to the near goal with double ardor flies him as he blazing shot across the field the careful eyes of priam first beheld not half so dreadful rises to the sight through the thick gloom of some tempestuous night orion's dog the year when autumn weighs and o'er the feebler stars exerts his rays terrific glory for his burning breath taints the red air with fevers plagues and death so flamed his fiery mail then wept the sage he strikes his reverend head now white with age he lifts his withered arms obtests the skies he calls his much-loved son with feeble cries the son resolved achilles force to dare full at the scan gates expects the war while the sad father on the rampart stands and thus adjures him with extended hands ah stay not stay not guardless and alone hector my loved my dearest bravest son methinks already i behold thee slain and stretched beneath that fury of the plain implacable achilles mightst thou be to all the gods no dearer than to me thee vultures wild should scatter round the shore and bloody dogs grow fiercer from thy gore how many valiant sons i late enjoyed valiant in vain by thy cursed arm destroyed or worse than slaughtered sold in distant isles to shameful bondage and unworthy toils too while i speak my eyes in vain explore two from one mother sprung my polydor and loved lycaon now perhaps no more oh if in yonder hostile camp they live what heaps of gold what treasures would i give their grandsire's wealth by right of birth their own consigned his daughter with Lelegius' throne but if which heaven forbid 
already lost all pale they wander on the stygian coast what sorrows then must their sad mother know what anguish i unutterable woe yet less that anguish less to her to me less to all troy if not deprived of thee yet shun achilles enter yet the wall and spare thyself thy father spare us all save thy dear life or if a soul so brave neglect that thought thy dearer glory save pity while yet i live these silver hairs while yet thy father feels the woes he bears yet cursed with sense a wretch whom in his rage all trembling on the verge of helpless age great jove has placed sad spectacle of pain the bitter dregs of fortune's cup to drain to fill with scenes of death his closing eyes and number all his days by miseries my heroes slain my bridal bed o'erturned my daughters ravished and my city burned my bleeding infants dashed against the floor these i have yet to see perhaps yet more perhaps even i reserved by angry fate the last sad relic of my ruined state dire pomp of sovereign wretchedness must fall and stain the pavement of my regal hall where famished dogs late guardians of my door shall lick their mangled master's spattered gore yet for my sons i thank ye gods tis well well have they perished for in fight they fell who dies in youth and vigour dies the best struck through with wounds all honest on the breast but when the fates in fulness of their rage spurn the hoar head of unresisting age in dust the reverend lineaments deform and pour to dogs the life-blood scarcely warm this this is misery the last the worst that man can feel man fated to be cursed he said and acting what no words could say rent from his head the silver locks away with him the mournful mother bears a part yet all her sorrows turn not hector's heart the zone unbraced her bosom she displayed and thus fast falling the salt tears she said have mercy on me o my son revere the words of age attend a parent's prayer if ever thee in these fond arms i pressed or stilled thy infant clamours at this breast ah do not thus our helpless years forego but by our walls secured repel the foe against his rage if singly thou proceed shouldst thou but heaven avert it shouldst thou bleed nor must thy course lie honoured on the bier nor spouse nor mother grace thee with a tear far from our pious rites those dear remains must feast the vultures on the naked plains so they while down their cheeks the torrents roll but fixed remains the purpose of his soul resolved he stands and with a fiery glance expects the hero's terrible advance so rolled up in his den the swelling snake beholds the traveller approach the brake when fed with noxious herbs his turgid veins have gathered half the poisons of the plains he burns he stiffens with collected ire and his red eyeballs glare with living fire beneath a turret on his shield reclined he stood and questioned thus his mighty mind where lies my way to enter in the wall honour and shame the ungenerous thought recall shall proud polydamus before the gate proclaim his counsels are obeyed too late which timely followed but the former night what numbers had been saved by hector's flight that wise advice rejected with disdain i feel my folly in my people slain methinks my suffering country's voice i hear but most her worthless sons insult my ear on my rash courage charge the chance of war and blame those virtues which they cannot share no if i e'er return return i must glorious my country's terror laid in dust or if i perish let her see me fall in field at least and fighting for her wall and yet suppose these measures i forego approach unarmed and parley with the foe the warrior shield the helm and lance lay down and treat on terms of peace to save the town the wife withheld the treasure ill detained cause of the war and grievance of the land with honourable justice to restore and add half aelian's yet remaining store which troy shall sworn produce that injured greece may share our wealth and leave our walls in peace but why this thought 
unarmed if i should go what hope of mercy from this vengeful foe but woman-like to fall and fall without a blow we greet not here as man conversing man met at an oak or journeying o'er a plain no season now for calm familiar talk like youths and maidens in an evening walk war is our business but to whom is given to die or triumph that determine heaven thus pondering like a god the greek drew nigh his dreadful plumage nodded from on high the pelian javelin in his better hand shot trembling rays that glittered o'er the land and on his breast the beamy splendour shone like jove's own lightning or the rising sun as hector sees unusual terrors rise struck by some god he fears recedes and flies he leaves the gates he leaves the wall behind achilles follows like the winged wind thus at the panting dove a falcon flies the swiftest racer of the liquid skies just when he holds or thinks he holds his prey obliquely wheeling through the aerial way with open beak and shrilling cries he springs and aims his claws and shoots upon his wings no less for right the rapid chase they held one urged by fury one by fear impelled now circling round the walls their course maintain where the high watch-tower overlooks the plain now where the fig-trees spread their umbrage broad a wider compass smoke along the road next by scamander's double source they bound where two famed fountains burst the parted ground this hot through scorching clefts is seen to rise with exhalations steaming to the skies that the green banks in summer's heat o'erflows like crystal clear and cold as winter snows each gushing fount a marble cistern fills whose polished bed receives the falling rills where trojan dames ere yet alarmed by greece washed their fur garments in the days of peace by these they passed one chasing one in flight the mighty fled pursued by stronger might swift was the course no vulgar prize they play no vulgar victim must reward the day such as in races crown the speedy strife the prize contended was great hector's life as when some hero's funerals are decreed in grateful honour of the mighty dead where high rewards the vigorous youth inflame some golden tripod or some lovely dame the panting coursers swiftly turn the goal and with them turns the raised spectator's soul thus three times round the trojan wall they fly the gazing gods lean forward from the sky to whom while eager on the chase they look the sire of mortals and immortal spoke unworthy sight the man beloved of heaven behold inglorious round yon city driven my heart partakes the generous hector's pain hector whose zeal whole hecatombs has slain whose grateful fumes the gods received with joy from ida's summits and the towers of troy now see him flying to his fears resigned and fate and fierce achilles close behind consult ye powers tis worthy your debate whether to snatch him from impending fate or let him bear by stern polites slain good as he is the lot imposed on man then pallas thus shall he whose vengeance forms the forky bolt and blackens heaven with storms shall he prolong one trojan's forfeit breath a man a mortal preordained to death and will no murmurs fill the courts above no gods indignant blame their partial jove go then returned the sire without delay exert thy will i give the fates their way swift at the mandate pleased tritonia flies and stoops impetuous from the cleaving skies as through the forest or the vale and lawn the well-breathed beagle drives the flying fawn in vain he tries the covert of the brakes or deep beneath the trembling thicket shakes sure of the vapour in the tainted dews the certain hound his various maze pursues thus step by step where'er the trojan wheeled there swift achilles compassed round the field oft as to reach the darden gates he bends and hopes the assistance of his pitying friends whose showering arrows as he coursed below from the high turrets might oppress the foe so oft achilles turns him to the plain he eyes the city but he eyes in vain as men in slumber seem with speedy pace 
one to pursue and one to lead the chase their sinking limbs the fancied course forsake nor this can fly nor that can overtake no less the labouring heroes pant and strain while that but flies and this pursues in vain what god o muse assisted hector's force with fate itself so long to hold the course phoebus it was who in his latest hour endued his knees with strength his nerves with power and great achilles lest some greeks advance should snatch the glory from his lifted lance signed to the troops to yield his foe the way and leave untouched the honours of the day jove lifts the golden balances that show the fates of mortal men and things below here each contending hero's lot he tries and weighs with equal hand their destinies lo sinks the scale surcharged with hector's fate heavy with death it sinks and hell receives the weight then phoebus left him fierce minerva flies to stern pelides and triumphing cries o oh, loved of jove this day our labours cease and conquest blazes with full beams on greece great hector falls that hector famed so far drunk with renown insatiable of war falls by thy hand and mine nor force nor flight shall more avail him nor his god of light see where in vain he supplicates above rolled at the feet of unrelenting jove rest here myself will lead the trojan on and urge to meet the fate he cannot shun her voice divine the chief with joyful mind obeyed and rested on his lance reclined while like deiphobus the martial dame her face her gesture and her arms the same in show and aid by hapless hector's side approached and greets him thus with voice belied too long o hector have i borne the sight of this distress and sorrowed in thy flight it fits us now a noble stand to make and here as brothers equal fates partake then he o prince allied in blood and fame dearer than all that own a brother's name of all that hecuba to priam bore long tried long loved much loved but honoured more since you of all our numerous race alone defend my life regardless of your own again the goddess much my father's prayer and much my mother's pressed me to forbear my friends embraced my knees adjured my stay but stronger love impelled and i obey come then the glorious conflict let us try let the steel sparkle and the javelin fly or let us stretch achilles on the field or to his arm our bloody trophies yield fraudful she said then swiftly marched before the dardan hero shuns his foe no more sternly they met the silence hector broke his dreadful plumage nodded as he spoke enough o son of peleus troy has viewed her walls thrice circled and her chief pursued but now some god within me bids me try thine or my fate i kill thee or i die yet on the verge of battle let us stay and for a moment's space suspend the day let heaven's high powers be called to arbitrate the just conditions of this stern debate eternal witnesses of all below and faithful guardians of the treasured vow to them i swear if victor in the strife jove by these hands shall shed thy noble life no vile dishonour shall thy course pursue stripped of its arms alone the conquerors do the rest to greece uninjured i'll restore now plight thy mutual oath i ask no more talk not of oaths the dreadful chief replies while anger flashed from his disdainful eyes detested as thou art and ought to be nor oath nor pact achilles plights with thee such pacts as lambs and rabid wolves combine such leagues as men and furious lions join to such i call the gods one constant state of lasting rancour and eternal hate no thought but rage and never ceasing strife till death extinguish rage and thought and life rouse then thy forces this important hour collect thy soul and call forth all thy power no further subterfuge no further chance tis pallas pallas gives thee to my lance each grecian ghost by thee deprived of breath now hovers round and calls thee to thy death 
he spoke and launched his javelin at the foe but hector shunned the meditated blow he stooped while o'er his head the flying spear sang innocent and spent its force in air minerva watched it falling on the land then drew and gave to great achilles hand unseen of hector who elate with joy now shakes his lance and braves the dread of troy the life you boasted to that javelin given prince you have missed my fate depends on heaven to thee presumptuous as thou art unknown or what must prove my fortune or thy own boasting is but an art our fears to blind and with false terrors sink another's mind but no whatever fate i am to try by no dishonest wound shall hector die i shall not fall a fugitive at least my soul shall bravely issue from my breast but first try thou my arm and may this dart end all my country's woes deep buried in thy heart the weapon flew its course unerring held unerring but the heavenly shield repelled the mortal dart resulting with a bound from off the ringing orb it struck the ground hector beheld his javelin fall in vain nor other lance nor other hope remain he calls deiphobus demands a spear in vain for no deiphobus was there all comfortless he stands then with a sigh tis so heaven wills it and my hour is nigh i deemed deiphobus had heard my call but he secure lies guarded in the wall a god deceived me pallas twas thy deed death and black fate approach tis i must bleed no refuge now no succour from above great jove deserts me and the son of jove propitious once and kind then welcome fate tis true i perish yet i perish great yet in a mighty deed i shall expire let future ages hear it and admire fierce at the word his weighty sword he drew and all collected on achilles flew so jove's bold bird high balanced in the air stoops from the clouds to truss the quivering hair nor less achilles his fierce soul prepares before his breast the flaming shield he bears refulgent orb above his fourfold cone the gilded horsehair sparkled in the sun nodding at every step vulcanian frame and as he moved his figure seemed on flame as radiant hesper shines with keener light far beaming o'er the silver host of night when all the starry train emblaze the sphere so shone the point of great achilles spear in his right hand he waves the weapon round eyes the whole man and meditates the wound but the rich mail patroclus lately wore securely cased the warrior's body o'er one space at length he spies to let in fate where twixt the neck and throat the jointed plate gave entrance through that penetrable part furious he drove the well-directed dart nor pierced the windpipe yet nor took the power of speech unhappy from thy dying hour prone on the field the bleeding warrior lies while thus triumphing stern achilles cries at last is hector stretched upon the plain who feared no vengeance for patroclus slain then prince you should have feared what now you feel achilles absent was achilles still yet a short space the great avenger stayed then low in dust thy strength and glory laid peaceful he sleeps with all our rites adorned for ever honoured and for ever mourned while cast to all the rage of hostile power thee birds shall mangle and the gods devour then hector fainting at the approach of death by thy own soul by those who gave thee breath by all the sacred prevalence of prayer ah leave me not for grecian dogs to tear the common rites of sepulture bestow to sue the father's and a mother's woe let their large gifts procure an urn at least and hector's ashes in his country rest no wretch accursed relentless he replies flames as he spoke shot flashing from his eyes not those who gave me breath should bid me spare nor all the sacred prevalence of prayer could i myself the bloody banquet join no to the dogs that carcass i resign 
should troy to bribe me bring forth all her store and giving thousands offer thousands more should dardan priam and his weeping dame drain their whole realm to buy one funeral flame there hector on the pile they should not see nor rob the vultures of one limb of thee then thus the chief his dying accents drew thy rage implacable too well i knew the furies that relentless breast have steeled and cursed thee with a heart that cannot yield yet think a day will come when fate's decree and angry gods shall wreak this wrong on thee phoebus and paris shall avenge my fate and stretch thee here before the scaean gate he ceased the fates suppressed his labouring breath and his eyes stiffened at the hand of death to the dark realm the spirit wings its way the manly body left a load of clay and plaintive glides along the dreary coast a naked wandering melancholy ghost achilles musing as he rolled his eyes o'er the dead hero thus unheard replies die thou the first when jove and heaven ordain i follow thee he said and stripped the slain then forcing backward from the gaping wound the reeking javelin cast it on the ground the thronging greeks behold with wondering eyes his manly beauty and superior size while some ignobler the great dead deface with wounds ungenerous or with taunts disgrace how changed that hector who like jove of late sent lightning on our fleets and scattered fate high o'er the slain the great achilles stands begirt with heroes and surrounding bands and thus aloud while all the host attends princes and leaders countrymen and friends since now at length the powerful will of heaven the dire destroyer to our arm has given is not troy fallen already haste ye powers see if already their deserted towers are left unmanned or if they yet retain the souls of heroes their great hector slain but what is troy or glory what to me or why reflects my mind on aught but thee divine patroclus death hath sealed his eyes unwept unhonoured uninterred he lies can his dear image from my soul depart long as the vital spirit moves my heart if in the melancholy shades below the flames of friends and lovers cease to glow yet mine shall sacred last mine undecayed burn on through death and animate my shade meanwhile ye sons of greece in triumph bring the corpse of hector and your paean sing be this the song slow moving toward the shore hector is dead and aelian is no more then his fell soul a thought of vengeance bred unworthy of himself and of the dead the nervous ankles bored his feet he bound with thongs inserted through the double wound these fixed up high behind the rolling wain his graceful head was trailed along the plain proud on his car the insulting victor stood and bore aloft his arms distilling blood he smites the steeds the rapid chariot flies the sudden clouds of circling dust arise now lost is all that formidable air the face divine and long descending hair purple the ground and streak the sable sand deformed dishonoured in his native land given to the rage of an insulting throng and in his parents sight now dragged along the mother first beheld with sad survey she rent her tresses venerable gray and cast far off the regal veils away with piercing shrieks his bitter fate she moans while the sad father answers groans with groans tears after tears his mournful cheeks o'erflow and the whole city wears one face of woe no less than if the rage of hostile fires from her foundations curling to her spires or the proud citadel at length should rise and the last blaze send aelian to the skies the wretched monarch of the falling state distracted presses to the dardan gate scarce the whole people stop his desperate course while strong affliction gives the feeble force grief tears his heart and drives him to and fro in all the raging impotence of woe at length he rolled in dust and thus begun imploring all and naming one by one ah let me let me go where sorrow calls 
i only i will issue from your walls guide or companion friends i ask ye none and bow before the murderer of my son my grief perhaps his pity may engage perhaps at least he may respect my age he has a father too a man like me one not exempt from age and misery vigorous no more as when his young embrace begot this pest of me and all my race how many valiant sons in early bloom has that cursed hand sent headlong to the tomb thee hector last thy loss divinely brave sinks my sad soul with sorrow to the grave o oh, had thy gentle spirit passed in peace the sun expiring in the sire's embrace while both thy parents wept the fatal hour and bending o'er thee mixed the tender shower some comfort that had been some sad relief to melt in full satiety of grief thus wailed the father grovelling on the ground and all the eyes of aelian streamed around amidst her matrons hecuba appears a mourning princess and a train in tears ah why has heaven prolonged this hated breath patient of horrors to behold thy death o oh, hector late thy parents pride and joy the boast of nations the defence of troy to whom her safety and her fame she owed her chief her hero and almost her god o oh, fatal change become in one sad day a senseless corse in animated clay but not as yet the fatal news had spread to fair andromache of hector dead as yet no messenger had told his fate not e'en his stay without the scanned gate far in the close recesses of the dome pensive she plied the melancholy loom a growing work employed her secret hours confusedly gay with intermingled flowers her fair-haired handmaids heat the brazen urn the bath preparing for her lord's return in vain alas her lord returns no more unbathed he lies and bleeds along the shore now from the walls the clamours reach her ear and all her members shake with sudden fear forth from her ivory hand the shuttle falls and thus astonished to her maids she calls ah follow me she cried what plaintive noise invades my ear tis sure my mother's voice my faltering knees their trembling frame desert a pulse unusual flutters at my heart some strange disaster some reverse of fate ye gods avert it threats the trojan state far be the omen which my thoughts suggest but much i fear my hector's dauntless breast confronts achilles chased along the plain shot from our walls i fear i fear him slain safe in the crowd he ever scorned to wait and sought for glory in the jaws of fate perhaps that noble heat has cost his breath now quenched for ever in the arms of death she spoke and furious with distracted pace fears in her heart and anguish in her face flies through the dome the maids her steps pursue and mounts the walls and sends around her view too soon her eyes the killing object found the godlike hector dragged along the ground a sudden darkness shades her swimming eyes she faints she falls her breath her colour flies her hair's fair ornaments the braids that bound the net that held them and the wreath that crowned the veil and diadem flew far away the gift of venus on her bridal day around a train of weeping sisters stands to raise her sinking with assistant hands scarce from the verge of death recalled again she faints or but recovers to complain o oh, wretched husband of a wretched wife born with one fate to one unhappy life for sure one star its baneful beam displayed on priam's roof and hippoplacia's shade from different parents different climes we came at different periods yet our fate the same why was my birth to great Ation owed and why was all that tender care bestowed would i had never been o oh, thou the ghost of my dead husband miserably lost thou to the dismal realms for ever gone and i abandoned desolate alone an only child once comfort of my pains sad product now of hapless love remains no more to smile upon his sire no friend to help him now no father to defend 
for should he scape the sword the common doom what wrongs attend him and what griefs to come even from his own paternal roof expelled some stranger ploughs his patrimonial field the day that to the shades the father sends robs the sad orphan of his father's friends he wretched outcast of mankind appears for ever sad for ever bathed in tears amongst the happy unregarded he hangs on the robe or trembles at the knee while those his father's former bounty fed nor reach the goblet nor divide the bread the kindest but his present wants allay to leave him wretched the succeeding day frugal compassion heedless they who boast both parents still nor feel what he has lost shall cry be gone thy father feasts not here the wretch obeys retiring with a tear thus wretched thus retiring all in tears to my sad soul eustyanix appears forced by repeated insults to return and to his widowed mother vainly mourn he who with tender delicacy bred with princes sported and on dainties fed and when still evening gave him up to rest sunk soft and down upon the nurse's breast must ah what must he not whom Ilion calls a Styanax, from her well-guarded walls is now that name no more unhappy boy since now no more thy father guards his troy but thou my hector liest exposed in air far from thy parents and thy consort's care whose hand in vain directed by her love the martial scarf and robe of triumph wove now to devouring flames be these a prey useless to thee from this accursed day yet let the sacrifice at least be paid an honour to the living not the dead so spake the mournful dame her matrons hear sigh back her sighs and answer tear with tear end of book twenty two